Anishinaabek, Shkegawak, and all indigenous peoples have the right to feel safe and be treated equitably within the city of Thunder Bay, especially by those sworn to serve and protect. What I was seeing and still continue to see is that in our capacity, we are failing miserably because again, we have, you know, some serious issues. Systemic racism exists within the Thunder Bay Police Service and needs to be ripped out at its roots. If this is your family, you would want justice. So you said this is not a crisis for you. What would be a crisis? So we recognize we certainly are in challenging times. That's different than being in crisis. Crisis, I, I don't know, you have multiple, multiple investigations, your chief on your investigation is in charge of the crime. Right, we have families who have to go home, you know, not receiving justice. Their families deserve answers. You have mockers dying in the river. You don't know how some of them die, it's undetermined. We demand that the Solicitor General of Ontario proceed with dismantling the Thunder Bay Police Service. I think anywhere else in the world, that's a crisis. For us currently though, what we see is business as usual. Thunder Bay, Ontario. For residents like George Ann Morriso, it's a city of contradictions. A diverse community of wealth and natural beauty, but also one of considerable challenges and struggles, especially for the indigenous population. I did not go in thinking that we're gonna solve the world's problems and think that, you know, things were gonna change overnight. I just went in there ready and willing to roll up my sleeves and you know do my part as both a first nation person woman you know within my capacity but also just as a citizen and a, and a regional member of this community. Morriso is Anishinaabe and a former chief of the Fort William First Nation. She was appointed to the Thunder Bay's Police Services Board in January of 2019. The board is responsible for governing and oversight of the city's police force. First off, you know, given my, my background, um, you know, and, and my heritage and life experience, you know, I thought being able to bring that perspective and that, you know, that qualified but informed perspective on, you know, Indigenous issues. Um, you know, a lot of these, these reports centered around that, right, the whole systemic racism piece and so forth. And so I really, you know, felt that I could bring a renewed uh, perspective to that conversation and looking at this as an opportunity and not a black eye or a threat, right, or as barriers. But the barriers in Thunder Bay run deep. And by the time Morrisville was elected as chair less than a year later, she began to notice a growing lack of leadership and accountability within the police service. I started to see things that I was quite frankly not comfortable with. You know, and of course my approach is to ask questions and continue to ask questions, you know, operate through deductive reasoning, trying to really, you know, figure things out, give everybody the benefit of the doubt, but it, I would say it became fairly quick um, that it became apparent that there was a leadership issue, that a lot of these issues stem from the leadership, both at the board level and at the service level at the highest. These type of allegations aren't anything new. When APTN traveled to Thunder Bay back in 2017, the force was under review over its treatment of indigenous people and racism in the ranks. And the police services board was also under a separate investigation. To say that we are in challenging times would be an understatement. I would like to assure everyone that the men and women of the Thunder Bay Police Service are doing their duty to serve and protect everyone who visits Thunder Bay or calls Thunder Bay home. While the leadership at the time was willing to admit that mistakes were made, they stopped short of calling the situation what it was. So you said this is not a crisis for you. 
what would be a crisis? It, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I mean, I think that's kind of an unfair question. What would be a crisis? I mean, you, you, may, you, you paint the picture, and then we'll tell you whether we think that's a crisis or not. I mean, that's a, that's a hard one. <laughs> What would be a crisis? I mean, one can envision all kinds of things that would be a crisis. I think Acting uh, Chief House was saying, we do not feel this is a crisis. We, we said, and, and she, her opening remarks were saying, that uh, to say that we are in challenging times would be an understatement, okay? So we recognize, we certainly are in challenging times. That's different than being in crisis. Crisis, I, I don't know, you have multiple, multiple investigations, your chief's under investigation in charge of the crime, your board's under investigation. You have multiple kids dying in the river. You don't know how some of them die. It's undetermined. That's not a crisis? I think anywhere else in the world, that's a crisis. For us currently, though, what we see is business as usual. And it's those attitudes that have contributed to the public's general mistrust of the Thunder Bay Police Service. And when you start to look at the headlines, it's easy to see why. Over the last five years, the Mbato Police Service has come under fire for their inability to properly investigate the deaths of Indigenous people, resulting in eight separate external investigations, dozens of sudden death cases being reinvestigated, and a call for the police service to be disbanded altogether. Anishinaabek, Shkegawak, and all Indigenous peoples have the right to feel safe and be treated equitably within the city of Thunder Bay especially by those sworn to serve and protect. Systemic racism exists within the Thunder Bay Police Service and needs to be ripped out at its roots. We demand that the Solicitor General of Ontario proceed with dismantling the Thunder Bay Police Service. The Ontario government mean, needs to prioritize listening to the Indigenous peoples who live, work and visit Thunder Bay. The documented racism and willful blindness by the Thunder Bay Police Services and the board have convinced us that no Indigenous family faced with a tragic death of their loved one can trust the work of the police services. Today, we stand united to call for the, to address the racism and the ongoing victimization of Indigenous families. And we want that to end. There are a few places where that type of victimization is felt more than here on Fort William First Nation. The reserve is just across the bridge from Thunder Bay. The ignorance within the service that chooses not to do the investigations with, you know, with ex exceptional skill and, and compassion, right? We have families who have to go home um, you know, not receiving justice. And, you know, I ask all citizens of, of Thunder Bay, you know, if this is your fam family member, you would want justice. Travis Boisonneau is the Regional Deputy Grand Council Chief for the Anishinaabeg Nation. The union advocates on behalf of 39 member First Nations across the province. They've had the chance. This is not new. The issue around investigations, the issue around major crime investigations has been around since, well, publicly since 1993. Right? There, there were calls for a change back then. Um, and then now with the broken trust, um, you know, the, the work continues. The, the ability for the public to hold the police service and the police board accountability uh, has been on, ongoing for years. And they've had the opportunity and there's been no real change. And that seems to be at the root of the problem. How do you affect meaningful and lasting change within an organization where systemic issues are so entrenched? The elected leadership in Thunder Bay continues to be silent. We live in their wards, we live in their sections, you know, we vote them in, and they continue to brush off what we're estimated to be 30% of the population here in Thunder in Thunder Bay and the City Council is silent. No one's, uh, no one's condemning what's going on and no one's supporting what's going on. They just sit in silence, they sit in the gray area and they, you know, uh, as elected leadership, they have a responsibility to hold all institutions accountable. They have a responsibility to make sure that there's public safety 
you know, exceptional public safety here within the city of Thunder Bay for all citizens. The sentiment echoed by insiders like Georgianne Morisot. She says the Thunder Bay Police Service is on the brink of collapse. In recent months, Morisot filed three separate human rights complaints, naming the board, the Thunder Bay Police Service, and Police Chief Sylvia Hoff. The complaints allege that she has faced discrimination and harassment because she's indigenous. There is a, a community and public expectation for them to serve and protect and do their jobs diligently and effectively and safely and keep the community safe. And, you know, what I was seeing and still continue to see is that in our capacity as, you know, as a board, and even now at the OCPC and, and the provincial level, we are failing miserably because again, we have, you know, some serious issues. The system is not just broken. The organization, the operations, the people are broken. And these are the very people that we expect to go out and do their jobs effectively by keeping the community safe, including our Indigenous people. I consider both my my home, my community, right? There's my home community, which is Fort William, First Nation, but I do consider Thunder Bay my home. You know, I, I feel that I'm both a contributing citizen of Thunder Bay, of the city of Thunder Bay, but I'm also, you know, recipient of its, its you know, many benefits and values. Like, I love, I do love Thunder Bay. Right, I, I do love Thunder Bay despite the challenges, you know, despite, you know, the everything going on here. It's still, it's still my home. It's been more than four months since Georgianne Morriso filed her human rights complaints against the Thunder Bay Police Service. The allegations only scratch the surface of the many systemic issues facing the embattled administration. Racism definitely exists in the city more ways than than one i absolutely will not deny that i will say that yes it's it's here it's prevalent it's you know that what the media depicts out there isn't isn't far off from what the reality is here in the city of thunder bay i just think that what you know the public should be need to to know or at least understand is that you know, there, the racism that exists here, right, there is a lot of effort being put into, you know, into addressing it, right? It's just not there yet. Like, it's just, it's, it's, it's going to take a lot, and it's going to take a lot more, um, I think it's going to take a lot more collectiveness to, to, to address it, but... I'm not necessarily sure if it'll ever really go away. It's a somber outlook, but given the city's recent history, it's also understandable. Thunder Bay has consistently been ranked one of the most violent cities in Canada. The majority of violent crime victims are Indigenous. Between 2017 and 2019, the city also had the highest homicide rates in the country. In 2018, the Police Services Board was disbanded after an investigation by Senator Murray Sinclair found the board had failed to deal with a clear and indisputable pattern of violence and systemic racism against First Nations people in the city. An administrator will now take over the Thunder Bay Police Services Board for one year in what is being called an emergency. That's the result of the second highly anticipated report regarding the Thunder Bay Police to be released this week. I am welcoming help because I think we need it and it's going to come with a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of resources. This is a new dawn, a new beginning and so uh, we'll do it right. 
Fast forward to 2022, APTM breaks the story of a confidential report detailing gross inadequacies within the police service. The report highlighted 14 sudden deaths and 25 unresolved missing and murdered Indigenous women cases that warranted further investigation. The cases all involve Indigenous people and go back nearly two decades. The next question, the member for Kiwetanong. The leaders of Anishinaabeg Nation and the Anishinaabeg Nation are here to tell this government that Indigenous people have no trust in the Thunder Bay Police. Their repeated failures to prob properly investigate the deaths of Indigenous people mean that an additional 25 unsolved cases of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls require an external review. Their families deserve answers. Systemic racism within the Thunder Bay Police is preventing justice for Indigenous people, and it is intolerable. Will this government immediately call for OPP oversight of the Thunder Bay Police? The member opposite and I and our government are in full agreement. These serious allegations must be and are being investigated by independence through the Ontario Civilian Police Commission, through the um, OPP. Those investigations must happen in order, exactly as you said, to bring back trust and faith in the police services in Thunder Bay and elsewhere. We've done that. Those investigations are ongoing, and we should not and cannot politically interfere in those independent uh, reviews as they take place. There are basic steps that aren't taking place. There are basic investigative skills that are just com completely ignored. And to, and to be honest, some of these steps are common, you know, um, what do you say, common sense. And when those investigations aren't taking place properly, well, how, how are we to feel? about that how are we to support our families in uh, you know entrusting the police service to uh, to, to do the in investigations mounting concerns that according to Travis Boisano have only festered during his tenure as deputy council grand chief with the Anishinaabeg nation you know there's uh, several Human rights complaints against the board. There's, you know, an active investigation against the chief of police. The, uh, I don't understand that, you know, in any conscious organization, whether it's, you know, an, a nonprofit or, or, or a corporation, when these types of allegations uh, are being done against the board, when these types of allegations are being done against, you know, the the senior leadership of any or organization there will be swift action but for some reason in Thunder Bay it allows to continue and the province needs to hold the leadership of this uh, of the Thunder Bay Police Service accountable the city of Thunder Bay as in the elected leadership needs to hold them accountable they need to hold themselves accountable and the citizens of Thunder Bay have to care in recent months Thunder Bay's deputy police chief was suspended pending an internal investigation Ontario Solicitor General has also requested additional investigations into Police Chief Sylvie Hoff, as well as the administration. It's the second time in five years an investigation of the police service is being undertaken by an independent oversight agency. The stakes are high, and to see how the board and the chief even react and, and operate, it, it is, it's concerning, but it's scary. It is scary. I mean, I'm a single mom at home with my kids. And, you know, we're talking about people, you know, who could potentially be held liable and accountable both criminally and or, you know, uh, through, through code of conduct and under the PSA. And so I don't know what they're capable of. I just know they're capable of doing more heinous things because of what they've already done and I see how you know people are treated and targeted I see how officers and civilians are treated and targeted I'm one of those people and I'm at the board level since filing her human rights complaints an additional seven active and retired officers 
and civilians have come forward with similar allegations. A total of 10 human rights complaints and 8 reprisal complaints against the police service, each claiming various levels of harassment and discrimination based on mental health, race, and gender. Should indigenous people in this city have faith in this police service? As long as the existing leadership's in place, I would have a very hard time sitting here saying that the, even the community should have trust in the service. I think the trust could be there with, you know, new leadership and if there was more accountability in, pla accountability in place. But right now, as, as it stands, I don't even trust the service and I sit there. APTN tried for more than two months to secure an interview with Thunder Bay Police Chief Sylvie Hoth. Our repeated attempts were declined. None of the allegations made against the police service have been proven in court. The public has a right to know. We don't have a right to keep anything from them that tells us we shouldn't keep it from them. Our oath tells us that, the PSA tells us that, you know, ethics, morals dictate that. And I wasn't seeing that. When we uh, got to leave Merritt, there's flames 100 feet high on one side and 50 feet high on the other side. And we could feel the heat inside the car. We never faced that much disaster before. I think right now people are trying to find a way to understand what's happening with the climate crisis. And this project has been a really great way to bring students uh, together with storytellers and folks that have experienced that and, and talk about climate anxiety and, and all the different stories that are coming about from climate disasters. We know that climate change uh, hits marginalized and vulnerable communities the hardest, the first, and the worst. This is their story, it's not our story. 